My name is Stuart Blacksell. I'm Professor of Tropical Microbiology at the University of Oxford. Uh, I also sit on a number of technical advisory groups for the WHO, many of them involving biosafety and biosecurity. The risk-based approach to biosafety and biosecurity uh, first came about in approximately five to seven years ago when we were revising the WHO Laboratory Biosafety Manual we recognised that we had a one-size-fits-all approach to biosafety, which wasn't working. And so now we look at the pathogen, we look at the activity, and then we determine the risk associated with that particular activity. The benefit of the risk-based approach allows us to be far more flexible than if we have a one-size-fits-all. This is super important when we're working in low-resource settings, such as in, in the tropics, and we might not have access to all of the, um, the resources that we would have in, in a, a more developed country. So what we look, do is we look at the activity and the pathogen and we come up with a more flexible proportional approach. The reason why we need a systematic approach to the reporting of laboratory accidents and also laboratory escapes of pathogens is because at the moment we have absolutely nothing on a global scale. To, that, that actually allows us to track uh, laboratory acquired infections or, or lab escapes of, of pathogens. This is required so we can have uh, more transparency at a global scale in terms of knowing what activities or what, what accidents have occurred. Uh, but also we can obviously go back and do root cause analysis to determine what was the cause of the accident or the incident and then remedy that so it doesn't occur in, in the future. The findings of the scoping review that examined laboratory acquired infections and lab escapes of pathogens over the last 20 years found that there was significant bias in the reporting of these accidents and incidents. So in countries where there was already reporting systems in place such as in the US or Canada it appeared that most of the accidents were occurring in those countries. In fact, the reason for the bias is because they are some of the few countries worldwide that actually have a standardised or a mandatory reporting system. Furthermore, the majority of the accidents and incidents were caused by human error or procedural errors. So we have a significant problem with people working in the laboratories and not following the rules. So there is a real opportunity here to invest in people and ensure that they are competent and able to follow the procedures in the laboratory.